sure you have no idea why Principal Sloan wants to talk to us. No. I'll bet you a baby bassinet I know why. Collier. Daddy, it's not because I'm pregnant. I haven't told a soul. Mr. and Mrs. Sims, Kelly, sorry for the wait. It's a busy morning. We've known about Kelly's pregnancy for quite a while. And I wanted to explain Fillmore's policy to you regarding this situation. You see, the board strongly feels that pregnant students compromise the educational process of other students, which is why we're going to transfer her to another facility. Transfer her? What? Mr. Sloan, I have to graduate with my friends. Where are you moving her? Delmar. Delmar? Those kids are a bunch of losers. It's a continuing educational facility for students whose behavior or circumstances make it impossible for them to remain in regular classes. Well, that's not Kelly, Mr. Sloan. She's a good kid. She's homecoming queen. And she has a wonderful grade point average. Why, it's th three point something. Nine. Three point nine. I do not need to be sold on Kelly's merits. Believe me, this is a very difficult situation for but me. This isn't fair. This will be on my transcripts forever. I'll never get to go to college. I'll never be eligible for scholarships. Is there any other solution other than sending her and Johnny to another school? Who? Johnny Williams. He's the father. Well, I'm afraid it's Kelly's condition that's disruptive. Maybe you should consider in home study. I'm sure you'll do what's best. I guess that's it. Please clean out your locker. I talked to the administrator at Del Mar, and they'll be expecting you first thing Monday morning. Today's my last day? I'm afraid so. Come on, Kelly. You coming, Mary Elizabeth? Yes, in a minute. I'll see you in the car. I don't mean to be disrespectful, Mr. Sloan. I, I know their rules and policies and uh, that you have a job to do. Thank you, Mrs. Sims. I appreciate that. This policy has been in place for a long time. And why does the policy not apply to a Johnny as well? It's obvious. No pun intended, but as soon as Kelly starts to show, the mere sight of her will send the message that Fillmore condones premarital sex. And the mere sight of a Johnny Mrs. sends the message that Fillmore condones sexism, Principal Sloan. It suggests that premarital sex is okay for the simple reason that if you are a male student, there is no price to pay. Now, Mrs. Sims... Don't patronize me. I'm not one of your students. You're blowing this all out of proportion. And you're an idiot. No pun intended. for you. We told you things would change. I just want to know who told on me. Told on you? You make it sound like you cheated on your homework. Yeah, I know, I know it wasn't Marsha. Kelly, you're not getting this. I only told, I only told Tracy and I told, I told Vicky. So you did tell people. Only my best friends because they promised they wouldn't say anything. Lesson number two, friendship and promises don't always go hand in hand. I bet it was Sharon McComb. Oh, this is all her fault. Sharon McComb did not get you pregnant. And Sharon McComb is not going to be the one changing 375 diapers every day on two hours sleep a night. You know, I'm going to go take a nap. If a Johnny calls, please wait. If you knew what Delmar was like, you would not make me go there. Hell, it's school policy. There's nothing we can do about it. There's got to be something we can do about this. I thought you just told her there wasn't. We've raised our daughter to respect authority. I, on the other hand, have no problem whatsoever burning that school to the ground. 
Arson's a felony. I don't think that's a good idea. They're kicking her out because she's pregnant. And you know why she's pregnant? Because she's a woman, that's why. That's not the only reason, Emmy. Since the beginning of time, they have been telling pregnant women to disappear and not come back until they have squatted out there in the back 40 with a piece of leather between their teeth or whatever and drop that baby in a tobacco field. A piece of leather? Or chain or rope or whatever it is to keep them from screaming, God forbid, a man should be subjected to the pain of childbirth. Did you find something? No, but there's the old standby, the 14th Amendment, or sexual discrimination. Good. Yeah, do that one. Because they don't intend to throw a Johnny out. I mean, do you really think that a Johnny should experience this whole thing the exact way that Kelly does? Well, he can't dilate, but he could be there just a little bit more. Where was he when Kelly told me she was pregnant? Playing football. Where is he every morning when she's throwing up, playing basketball? Where is he going to be when she's in labor, playing baseball? I'll tell you one thing. I think the reason that these men play with all these balls is because they don't have any of their own. Here it is. Good. Can we sue? Afraid not. There's no citywide law dictating policy regarding pregnant students. It's up to each individual board. You've got to help me. They are kicking her out of school. This cannot be legal. Honey, if they were terminating her education, that'd be another story. But Sloan's covered as legal basis. They're just transferring her. To the Twilight Zone. I know of a couple of schools that accommodate pregnant students, but they're not in your district. We'll sell the house. We'll move. Not by Monday. Ultimately, I need to have a meeting with the board, and I can't do that by Monday. <sighs> Kelly may have to go to Delmar for a day or two. I can live with a day or two. All right. Want to go get some lunch? No. Ever since this whole thing started, my stomach's been nothing but a roller coaster. <laughs> You're giving me a Ferris wheel stomach. Isn't it fun? No, stop! You two gonna come up for air? Emmy, haven't you ever heard of knocking? There's no door, Renee. Hello, Henry. Hi, Emmy. I better be heading home, Snooks. Snooks? See you tomorrow at school. And wear that cute little red shirt. Sure. See you, Emmy. Snooks? It's his nickname for me. So, why were you kissing so long? I don't know. It's fun. Fun? But all you're doing is pressing your lips together. You weren't even making noise. Like Teresa was when we spied on her. <laughs> she sounded like she had a cramp in her foot or something. You gonna kiss him again? Sure. I'm even thinking about second base. But you don't even like baseball. Not that second base. There's another one where you wear a nice sweater and let the boy tell you how soft the sweater is. At least I think that's what it is. Who told you that? I overheard some older girls at school. You should let Collier touch your sweater, too. If you don't, he might want to break up with you again. Well, if Collier doesn't want to be my boyfriend just because I won't let him feel my sweater, I don't want to be his girlfriend either. Besides, sweaters make me itch. Just be careful, or you'll end up old and alone like one-eyed Miss Gleason. Mom, do you think Miss Gleason is happy? The lovely Miss Gleason with one eye? Well, the Lord has given her a cross to bear, that is for sure. And considering she's never been married, doesn't have any children, walks with a cane, and she is blind as a bat, I'm sure she's very happy. Why? Just wondering. Well, you go wash your face upstairs and wonder in bed. It is getting very late, little lady. Yes, ma'am. Just be careful, or you'll end up old and alone like one-eyed Miss Gleason. Nucleus of an atom out of pipe cleaners. What are you doing? Eating cookies. You want to meet me for a soda or something after school tomorrow? Uh, well, I don't think so. I gotta finish this science project by Friday. I'll let you get to first base. Well, I could come over now. No! Tomorrow. Meet me at Port Dixie at 4 o'clock. Are you sure you don't want to do it now? No, call your. My dad's lying on the couch watching TV. And if the doorbell rings after 9 o'clock at night, he goes crazy. He called out when he had it. I'll get it.
Good evening, Mr. Sims. Uh, may I speak to Kelly? She's not here. Shouldn't you be at basketball practice or something? Oh, I just came from there. Then why aren't you home studying? I'm sure you have homework since you're still in school and all. What time is she getting home? I'll tell her you stop by. Who was that, Daddy? She always witness. Oh, okay. Um, good night. Morning, Mom. Hi, sweetie. Mom, I don't want this. Oh, eggs made me queasy, too. Well, how about some cereal? You gotta eat something. Mom, it's not the eggs. It's Delmar. Please don't make me go there. Mom, it's not fair. I'm not like those losers. Of course you're not a loser, darling. No one said you were. But we talked about this. I want you to get dressed. I'll drive you. You don't have to go alone. This is ridiculous. I feel like I'm in kindergarten. If only you were. Nice job. I know this is hard for you, honey. One of the things in life is learning how to follow the rules. You'll get through it. Well, what the heck? One of these days, we'll look back on all this and laugh. Make some new friends. You're picking me up, right? You won't be late. She's not going. They had kids smoking crack and having sex right there in the front yard. No, not in the front yard. You wouldn't believe it. They even had a demented rabbit dog tied up to a tetanus-ridden post. Do you know how bad tetanus is for pregnant women? Well, let me tell you something. It's going to be a cold day in hell when a child of mine goes to a school like that. I think she should go right back out there to Fillmore. I mean, what's the worst thing they could do to her? They can arrest her. You know, I don't think you care about this very much. I mean, I care very much, but my hands are tied until I can meet with a board. Well, I think you should at least go out there and look at that death camp they call a school. And then you would see how bad it is for Kelly. Where is it? Three miles out on Highway 5. Take a left at the Hungarian taco stand. You realize, don't you, that no matter how this all plays out, it has to be Kelly's battle? I know it's Kelly's battle. But I've got to help her fight it. No, you don't. You keep telling her to grow up, take responsibility for herself, be an adult, make decisions, and yet still you go sneaking around behind her back, putting out the fires yourself. That's what a mother's supposed to do. Why don't you try to teach a kid responsibility? Hey, now. I know. Uh, no, I'm not a mother, and where the hell do I get off trying to tell you how to raise your kids? Thank you. That said, all you can do is help her to review the situation, lay out the options, but the final decision has got to be be hers, assuming you really do want it to behave in the manner in which you say you do. I hate you. Uh-huh. I hate this. Things were a whole lot easier, and we were just kids hanging out at Port Dixie. If I remember correctly, we did a whole lot of growing up there, too.
Adams. Did you like it? No, not really. Did Collier like it? I couldn't tell. He didn't say much. Well, maybe second base is more fun than first. How many bases are there anyway? Three. And a home plate. Hey, maybe I'd like that better. I love it when I score. But don't you have to get to third before you get to home? I mean, isn't that how it works in baseball? Well, you have to pass third to go to home, but you don't have to stay there. What is home plate anyway? I bet old Miss Gleason poked her eye out on purpose, just so she wouldn't have to deal with all these bases. Maybe we should ask somebody, so Claudia and Henry won't think we're stupid. Do you think our parents know? No way. I don't even think my mom's been up to bat. We need to ask some older girl. Somebody who's been around the bases for sure. Teresa. She knows all about all kinds of kissing. Security. You touch it, you get electrocuted. Ooh, baby. Lewis, that's not your sister. Got that right. Out. I called earlier, Renee Jackson. Right. Have a seat, Dick Conroy. Out. Welcome to Lower Learning, Miss Jackson. What can I do for you? A friend of mine is a senior at Fillmore, and she's pregnant. They think she should come here, and I don't. Probably not. Is she a good student? The best. Emotional problems? Nothing unusual for an unwed pregnant 17-year-old. Uh, I'm going to need some cold statistics. Maybe you can help. I need to see some student files. Mom, Ms. Jackson, you're a lawyer. You know I can't do that. And if I subpoenaed them? I'd hand deliver them to your home with a bottle of wine if it meant keeping your friend out of here. I like Chardonnay, and that won't be necessary. I came prepared. And I like Cabernet. Good for you. Mr. Conroy? Yes, Maria. Did you think about what we talked about? I gotta know right away. Yes, I did. We need to talk some more. When? When Miss Jackson and I have finished, right? Okay. Please don't take this the wrong way. I don't want to offend you, but you seem like a very nice, well-educated man. I am. Then. Why are you here? If one kid out of the 30 or 40 that come through this door every semester makes it, then that's why I'm here. These kids didn't come out of the womb this way. Something happened to them. Thank you. Really appreciate this. I'll walk you to your car. Mr. Conroy. Please, I have to talk to you. Maria, one minute. What's going on with her? Personal stuff. Kids around here, they either hate your guts or latch onto you like you're their best friend. Must be tough. Miss Jackson, please don't take this the wrong way. I don't want to offend you, but you seem to me to be a very nice, well-educated woman. Keeping your friend out of here is noble. What about the rest of these kids? What about them? I can't help all these kids. The school board's allocated $50,000 for football gear and uniforms for two of the high schools. Delmar has to hold fundraisers to buy furniture. Are you asking me to write a check? I'm asking to meet with the parents. What good's that going to do? Tell you to find out. I'm sorry. I, uh, I just don't have the time. I voted for you for DA because your education proposals were liberal, cutting edge. Please don't do this. I guess maybe you just made it all up, pretended to care, to get votes. Damn you. Here's my address. I can have the parents together tomorrow night, say, 7? I have a meeting at my office at 6. You come to me. You all right? I guess. It's just my gums. I bleed whenever I brush my teeth. That's what we pregnant women call pink toothbrush. We? You pregnant now, too? Slap your mouth. I can't. It's bleeding. Listen, we haven't really planned how you would handle your pregnancy in the fifth month, much less the ninth. What do you mean? I thought I'd get out of bed in the morning, throw up, take a shower, throw up, get dressed, throw up, and go to school. Well, morning sickness will soon be over, only to be replaced by constipation, heartburn, 
hemorrhoids and swollen ankles. I thought pregnant women were supposed to glow. Only in the dark. Listen, I have a confession to make. Let me guess. You and Daddy love a Johnny, and you are secretly thrilled I'm pregnant so that I can have a mixed-race baby and you two can be grandparents. You still got your sense of humor. That's good. Actually, I feel like I've been a little hypocritical over this Del Mar thing. So what'd you do this time? Well, at the same time that I've been asking you to accept leaving Fillmore, I've been running around trying to fix it. I was wrong. It's not my job. It's yours. I want you to check out your options and know that I will support any decision you make. I want you to ask yourself if your own daughter was in this situation, and given our family history, she probably will be, what would you want her to do? love you very much. Thanks, Mom. Kelly! Come in here. What are you doing up? Are you all right? Are you alone? Very. Don't you have a hat or a raincoat? Where's your umbrella? I needed to clear my head, so I, I just, I took a walk. You walked here? Does that mean know that you're here? I, I just told her I was going out. I'm going to have to call her, you know, just so she won't worry. No, please don't. She'll insist on coming to get me. Probably. I don't want to see her yet. I need the time alone with you first, if that's okay. Of course that's okay, you poor thing. Let's get you two dried off. Upstairs, get you into some dry clothes. <laughs> Soup was a great idea. Mom always made me soup when it rained. Mom microwaves frozen macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> if only macaroni and cheese could solve life's problems. Honey, I know this legalese can be confusing. Is there anything you don't understand? I think I've got it. Uh, one, I could sue the school for discrimination and or sexual harassment. Two, go back to school and risk arrest. Three, go back to Del Mar and risk my life. Four, go to court and get an injunction. So what do you want to do? I think get an injunction so that I can go back to Fillmore until you meet with the board. I think that would be best. Got to tell you, though, there might be some press. That's OK. Sure. Your picture could end up in the front of a newspaper. Really? Really. Pregnant, unwed, homecoming queen Sue's school. It's pretty heavy. Think you can handle that? There's your mother. She's in the living room. Honey? Why didn't you just come back and get the car? I was already halfway here. Mom, Renee and I have a plan. Oh, what's the plan? We're going to go to court. Renee's going to get an injunction so that we can stop Fillmore from kicking me out so we can argue their policy. Excellent. Great plan. When do we go? Mom, I need to take care of this myself. Great. Don't have to be there. Got a life. Let's go. You must be starving. And I've made you just a little macaroni and cheese. seeking injunctive relief until we can meet with the board, which could be weeks. In the meantime, Miss Sims' education will be compromised if she is forced to attend Delmar. Furthermore, if Delmar becomes a permanent part of her scholastic record, it could impair her future pursuit of scholarship and entrance eligibility to many institutions of higher learning. In other words, attending Delmar will cause her irreparable harm. Finished? That would be up to you, Your Honor. Why don't you just come right out and say it, Miss Jackson? Delmar houses nothing but drug addicts and thieves, and you don't think your client ought to be exiled there just because she's pregnant? There is that, too, Your Honor. The request of relief is granted. Yes. You will notify the board of my decision and request a meeting on an expedited basis. If they reject your plea to be heard, we will meet again. 
And we will settle this once and for all. Thank you, Your Honor. Renee, that was great. Compromised education. It came to me while your mom was talking about Del Mar, but don't tell her it was her idea. We'll never hear the end of it. You think I have a shot at this? I think you have a shot at this. talk, Mr. Sims. I got nothing to say to you. Well, I've got plenty to say to you. I want us to come to an agreement. I don't think that's possible. Are you even willing to listen to me? <laughs> Sir. This better be good. Have a seat. Well, I'd rather stand, sir. Sit down. Yes, sir. Make this quick. Kelly's gonna get home any minute, and I don't want you to hear what she does. Why don't you like me? The fact that you even have to ask that should be the answer to that question. First of all, you have gotten my daughter pregnant, which is tearing my family apart. And second of all, you seem to think that basketball is more important than Kelly and her baby. Our baby. And that's not true, sir. Well, you could have fooled me. Don't you even care that Kelly got kicked out of school? Of course I do. And what have you done about it? <sighs> exactly. You should be cleaning up the circus you've created rather than come knocking on my door whining, why don't you like me? Well, the way we treat each other in front of Kelly and Mrs. Sims is killing them. We don't have to like each other, but it doesn't mean we have to take it out on them either. I am not the one here who needs changing. Are you willing to be cordial to each other in front of them? If you got a problem with me, come to me and talk about it one-on-one -on -one like a man. Sir. I'll try it, but only because that's what's best for them. Don't think that this changes how I feel about you. I'm standing my ground. Now get out of here. Thank you, Mr. Sims. You won't regret this. I already do. All right, food here. Hi. What are you doing here? Well, stay for dinner. Uh, that's okay. I better be getting home. Well, let's take you out, but we eat it off real plates. You go home after you wash them. Uh, sure. <laughs> then that'd be great. Come on. Oh, great Chinese food. Start. So, what y'all been talking about? Basketball. But they're gonna let her back in her old school after she had a baby. So it really don't matter what Delmar is like. But she's gonna have to go there at least two more months until she has the baby. Do you really want her attending a school that can't accommodate her needs? What do you mean, needs? What about a chair she can sit in? Or pens to write? Or better yet, a place where she can muster up enough self-esteem to see a future, as opposed to just getting through the day? That girl made her bed, and I told her she gonna lay in it. Period. Mrs. Halliday, if you have no concern for your granddaughter's welfare, then I don't understand. Why did you come here tonight? To make damn sure she don't get kicked out of Delmar. She get kicked out, my check shrink. Not at night. See what I mean? Wow. 30 students and only five parents show up? Actually, three parents and two grandmothers. I had no idea. Renee, I apologize for roping you into this. I'd hoped to get you fired up so you'd see the light, care, go before the school board and get that jockstrap money allocated to Del Mar. Why haven't you done that? I got three months to go before I get tenure. After that, I plan on shaking things up a little bit. Good. In time, I'll make a few phone calls. Budgets are public record, and the school board is made up of elected officials. Maybe we've got an election coming up. See if we can get somebody on our side. Good. You got kids? No. You? This week I got 37. <laughs> These kids sure are growing up differently than I did. Where did you grow up? Boston. Worst thing that happened to me was losing the state basketball championship. All we had to worry about was getting letter sweaters, class rings, and going steady. And sex. It was something far, far away. But I thought 
kissing was first base. Just when I thought you couldn't get any stupider. It's more than just a silly kiss. I kiss puppies and certainly for one moment don't consider that I've ever dragged a dog to first base. That's something fat and ugly Von Strang would do. So what is first base? It has to do with tongues. But you already told us about tongues last year. It's more than just tip to tip. First base is when you stick your whole tongue in the boy's mouth. Yuck. Yeah. My Billy calls it throat hockey. So what's second base? I know, you have to wear a soft sweater, right? Second base is letting a boy touch your boobie. It has nothing to do with what you wear, Spaz. I'm never letting Collier do that. Me neither. You better not. He's my boyfriend. I wouldn't worry about it. He need a magnifying glass to find your boobies. You're just older than me, that's all. Let me just say that when I was 12, the boys used to call me Miss Tangerine. They'd call you Miss Acorn. So what's third base at home plate? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Teresa, how are we gonna find out if you don't tell us? Never forget this as long as you live. The female and male reproductive systems were created by God for one reason and one reason alone. Procreation. Yes, Mary Elizabeth. What's procreation, Sister Joy? Who would like to tell Mary Elizabeth? Since it was last night's homework. Yes, call you. Procreation, from the Latin procreara, to produce offspring, to beget, propagate, or generate, to give rise to. But what does it mean? Making babies. That's why God made all this. Um, I know. Uh, Bobby. My father already told me how babies are made. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did. He told me the morning after I heard a bunch of squeaky weird noises coming from their room. He said that the father jumps up and down on the bed like a trampoline, while the mother turns on the television real loud and makes wolf sounds. But it only works if the kids stay in the room and don't come out till morning. Your father is right. And after a man and a woman are married, in the eyes of God, it's considered a beautiful thing. However, before you're married, even a simple little kiss between a boy and a girl can trigger the ovaries here to spew eggs into the fallopian tubes here, where they are greeted by sperm made by the testicles. Here. Next thing you know, you're having a baby, or even worse, cursed for syphilis. Yes, Mary Elizabeth. I heard my mom say that my Uncle Arnold was shiftless. Does that mean he kissed a girl before he was married? Not shiftless. Syphilis. Little curly cue things that screw into the brain and make you go blind or even worse, paralyze you. Any more questions? Yes, Mary Elizabeth? Does any of this stuff have to do with how I can get to third base? <laughs> Renee? I'm in my room. Ow! Sorry, Renee. Tell me it's not too late. Too late for what? Tell me you haven't gone to second base yet. No, I haven't even decided which soft sweater to wear. Do you like this pink one? No, you can't wear any of them. You sure you haven't gone to second base with Henry yet? You wouldn't lie to me, would you? No, what are you doing? Checking for sores and lesions. Sister Joy told us how miserable we'd be if we did all that stuff before we married. Some people go blind. Your hands can even fall off. You can even have a baby if you kiss a boy. <gasps> My mother never told me anything like that. Well, you can. I think we're OK this time. That was close. No, I've never had a baby, and I resent your asking. A little personal, don't you think? I'm merely trying to get you to relate to this on a personal level. Have you ever had a baby? I didn't think so. So why don't we just leave personal experience out of this and look at the law, which requires me to inform you that I have been given an injunction allowing Miss Sims to return to Fillmore until the school board grants us a meeting. This has happened before, and I can tell you that the school board will not grant you a meeting. They feel very strongly about this policy. Then they'll be given an opportunity to express their feelings in court. They won't. Then we'll win. 
I know you're a friend of the Sims family, and therefore you have a personal stake in this. But if that wasn't the case, could you honestly tell me that you don't think that Kelly's pregnancy will have a negative impact on the students? I don't think Kelly's pregnancy will have a negative impact on the students. I didn't hear a bell. Class is not over. What's going on? We're walking out, Mr. Sloan. If Kelly can't go to school here, neither will the rest of us. Davis to the dentist. When will she be back? Oh, a few hours. Daddy, look, I gotta talk to you. So talk. No. Now, Dad, I gotta talk to you now. Now what? Now, before you answer the door. Look, a Johnny and I staged a walkout at school. He got suspended and kicked off the team. <sighs> Come in. Oh, it's you. And his mother, Collier. Gail. Come on in. We're not staying. I just want to know if you're happy now. I'm not happy about any of this. I never have been. But I am glad that Johnny's done something to prove that he cares about what happened to Kelly. So now both kids are kicked out of school. And now that this is on his record, a Johnny will probably never get accepted to Morehouse. I wasn't going to go anyway, Mom. Maybe not this year, but later. Daddy, we were just trying to get Mr. Sloan to let me back into school. But you knew Renee was working on this. You should have waited to see what happened in court. Wait, you're taking this to court? Yep. So let's wait until after court and the judge rules. And then we'll deal with the Johnny suspension, okay? Okay. 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 Let's go tell your father. You must have known about this. Oh, man. It's like I said, life isn't fair. Yeah, well, it's like Renee says. Only macaroni and cheese could solve life's problems. It looks like spaghetti casserole. I had no idea that all that stuff was inside of me. Me neither. Does yours look like that? No way! I need a drink. Yeah, me too. Grape okay? Mm-hmm. You don't think we're going to hell, do you? I, I don't think so. We only got to first base, right? Yeah, it's probably just a couple Hail Marys. Second base, probably Novena. Boy, that was close. You're telling me. Here. If I ever got preggers before I got married, my mom would kill me. Well, I can promise you one thing, Mary Elizabeth. That will never happen. So, what do you Before me, notice sent by a council for Millard Fillmore High School stating that they are waiving their right to appear and that, although they do not concede in your request, they will not oppose my ruling. That's wonderful, Your Honor. This is not a slam dunk, Miss Jackson. I still need to hear from you. Of course. 
where Fillmore violated Miss Sims' rights is obviously a 14th Amendment issue. She's protected through due process and equal protection, and the school ignored this. They just kicked her out without giving her an opportunity to be heard. They can't do that. And so we ask the court to take all of this into consideration and allow Miss Sims to return to her school and be graduated in June with honors, I might add. You finished? Oh. Aside from pointing out that Article 6 prohibits discrimination in education based on race, which could arguably apply since the father is African American, yes. That's it. With the exception of reminding Your Honor that the First Amendment does indeed state that Miss Sims can associate with whomever she chooses, yes. That would be it. You want to throw in Title IX just to be on the safe side? Since it prohibits sexual discrimination and Miss Sims is a woman, that, that's not a bad idea. Why, thank you, Your Honor. Hmm. Off the record, Miss Sims, if uh, you decide you want to bring charges against the school, I won't fall out of my chair. Miss Sims will return to Fillmore tomorrow morning. Dismissed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Renee. You're welcome, sweetie. I'll, I'll see you later. You're the best. I know. <laughs> Come to dinner, a little celebration. I can't. I gotta work. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks, Renee. Good job, Council. Conroy, what are you doing here? Hiding in the back. Congratulations. You kept your friend out of you know where. Thank you, but she would have been in good hands with you. Thank you. I just wanted to tell you how great it was to meet you. Don't forget about that school board. See you, Renee. See ya. Do you believe a judge told me to sue the school? Maybe you should think about it. I'm sure Renee would be happy to take this to the wall. She must be a really good friend. The best. She was so great today. I hope you don't mind leftovers of Johnny. Not at all. I love macaroni and cheese. In fact, my mom always makes it when it rains. 